Hey guys, it's Wade here from Ice Cold, North Carolina, and I do mean that literally. Everything is frozen around here. It's pretty cold. That's why I haven't been working on the plane. I've been taking the opportunity to get the mill online, and tonight will be the first time that I'll be making chips as far as the mill being controlled via CNC. Actually, I did it last night. You could kind of say it was controlled via CNC. I made a couple flats on the nub on the other side. Here's a picture of that. I did use the pendant for that just to, uh, like I said, create a couple flats so that I could secure this thing into the uh, vise here. My rather uh, oversized vise. This is a five inch vise, probably sh should have gone with a four. Okay, so what I've been doing besides the first iteration after I got most of the components installed, got the motors turning and all that. I leveled the bed in X and Y. I'll cover that a little bit more in another video. And then trimmed the spindle out, headstock, all that. Did a bunch of shimming. So the machine is fairly straight. I don't think any of those planes are over one thou. Most of them are far below. Pretty acceptable. Okay, so after that I've been dialing in Pretty much four different independent and then dependent software slash applications. That's the Fusion 360, getting that online. I haven't used that in about a year, so I had to kind of relearn some of that. A new post processor for Fusion 360 to interface with the Acorn Mill CNC12. They Apparently the post processor they had for Fusion was... Uh, fairly old and outdated it just wasn't working so super genius i mean a super smart guy seriously on the boards at uh, centroid acorn he created both that post processor and then also a probe app which i'm actually going to show you here in just a second and then those interface and overlay as far as the probe app onto mill cnc12 so right now the first process part of the process and i'm dialing all this in uh, you know, I've had a couple of uh, misstarts here just trying to get this process down of, of uh, A to Z on how to mill apart. The first thing is to open up the probe app and uh, test the part. And we're looking for the work coordinate system. So we're going to, just like you would use a dial indicator and all that and, and touch off the part. It's kind of what we're going to do here. Again, I'm using the pendant. This thing is invaluable. I I'm telling you. I use it all the time because you can get up close, you can check out your work, you can have eyes on right there and, and then have your control literally right inches away from it. It's just amazingly a game changer. I'm get on the right speed. And I'm just doing that by spinning this right here. Okay, that's good right there. Now, bring it over here. You'll have to excuse my camera work. Uh, the handle on my uh, tripod broke. I guess I should say I broke it, but. Okay, so I got you set up on the, on the computer, had some technical difficulties. Uh, the tripod got hung up in my shoelaces and I, well, I'm not showing you that part. Okay, so uh, here we have uh, Centroid Acorn Mill CNC12, and then like I said, we have the probe app, which I'm going to bring up. It's a little button right here, and then we're going to go to the boring, or the bore. I guess it might be boring for some folks. <laughs> the boring, uh, the probing bore cycle, and it, it gives you all the instructions you need to know. There is three-point boring in case... Uh, you don't have enough room to, you know, you have a, a corner or a wedge um, covered up. So that's kind of cool. All right, so we're going to do X and Y as your offset. And we're just going to do the active work coordinate system. We'll press start. Let me get my hand out of the way. And just do a, do a cycle start now. Let me set you up over here. So again, I'm going to use this. I'm just going to press the cycle start on the pendant. So 
So that's going to tell us what our bore diameter is. And that's interesting to know, but of course what we're looking for is X0, Y0 in the current work coordinate system. So I'm just going to hit cycle start here. All right, so we've got X and Y0. Now I'm going to bring the probe out and get it over off to the side so that we can probe this surface so we can get Z0. Again, using the pendant. There we go. Helps if you don't go to off and you go to X. All right, so here we are on the computer again. Obviously, we have X and Y somewhat zeroed out. Um, we know that they're in the work coordinate system. And then now we're going to do Z. Again, we're going to hit the probe app. We're just going to go to the single axis right here. It's going to know because we want to go on the top versus the sides. We're going to set the work coordinate system after probing. And we're going to go into the active. And then we'll hit start. And then I'll hit cycle start. And we missed it. Okay, I brought the probe up a little bit more, and when I hit that cycle start over there, it happened so quickly I couldn't get the camera around. But again, I'm going to hit cycle start on this guy. And that's it. Kind of anticlimactic, but it's pretty cool. So now we have our Z set to zero. So we have our work coordinate system set up. We've got all our axes. Okay, I'm going to go through this process, try to do it fairly quickly, but uh, there's some people I think that are kind of interested to see this. So when you hit load, it just brings up the file folder on your computer where it st stores all the CNC. So we're going to pull this guy up. That puts it up here so we know it's loaded. Now I do know that um, one of the cool things about the probe app and the new Fusion 360 post processor that I'm using is again it it integrates Fusion 360 with this uh, Mill CNC 12 program. So I do know that some of the tools like this tool that I'll be using, I do know that it's not uh, the diameter is not in the library for um, for Mill CNC 12, and I left it that way so you could see kind of how this the two integrate and how they. Uh, they handle any mismatches between the two different libraries as far as the tool libraries. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and start this this uh, program. So this is something I wanted to show you guys. So it says, warning, tool number 12 diameter does not match. Uh, Fusion has it at 0.3125, 5 sixteenths. CNC 12 has it at zero. And then what do you want to do? Again, this is kind of clunky. I saw somewhere, I think it was on a YouTube video that said that this looked like an old, uh, you know, 1990s word processor. It kind of does, but hey, it's uh, powerful and it works. So rock on. I went ahead and uh, got out of the program quickly and then raised the Z axis to make sure that I wasn't going to crash the probe. Again, uh, I'm testing out a lot of this and as I'm going through all these and, and the different machinations of each process as I go through it each time. So I want to make sure that I'm, I'm not ruining anything, of course. All right, so this is the screen I definitely wanted to see. We're going to take this guy out. I will set up a, a more permanent solution to capture that plug and that cord. So right now, we're going to go up here bring this guy down it's engaged right now so that guy's out put it in its holder I do have the majority of the tools I have right now are actually loaded up into tool holders they're numbered and they are entered into Fusion 360 as far as the tool library. So we want tool number 12. We'll look at the spaceship. There's tool 12. Give her one little quick blast because she's actually going to be turning. All right. Got to stretch that collet out. So tool 12 is now installed. Let's make some chips. So, two things. 
kind of in it like if you've ever seen the movie Iron Man where he makes the suit and he says sometimes you gotta run before you can crawl that's kind of how I operate so I don't really like doing a lot of test cuts and all that I like getting stuff done kind of a high risk so um you know, if this part gets destroyed, A, you probably won't be seeing, watching this video. <laughs> and B, uh, it's, I think, 10 bucks off of Amazon. I'll get another one. So uh, I don't think it's going to destroy it, though. I have high confidence. All right. I wish I actually had two cameras so I could split the screen. I am going to show you this. So now it has CNC 12. What it's showing for the tool height, the height offset, and then fusion. 360 same tool and then all the information as far as feeds and speeds and all that kind of stuff This is initial. So again, I'm just testing stuff out. You'll know cooling mist right there I am going to be testing out. Uh, hopefully it fires up the fog buster if it doesn't I'll do it manually, but I will be actually doing some uh, uh, Assessing of the fog buster and dialing it in it. All right, like I said, let's make some chips kick me over to a uh, the tool library manager which I really don't need to be in I don't think so I'll show you that so this is a uh, kind of a combination of what you're seeing between uh, mill CNC 12 the, the CNC software and the integration of fusion 360 as you're working your jobs all right let's put you back over here and again let's try to make some chips here I wasn't expecting this, but I guess it's going to want to measure and touch off on the tool. I'm going to go ahead and show you this probing cycle. I don't think what needs to be done, but it brought up the probe app script. Again, I'm, I'm kind of working through the flow and the process of how this works. So here we go. And then it all it takes it all the way up to the tool check height. So I'm going to get this thing all set up again.
So I'm really happy with this cut. You can see some lines here, but you I can't feel anything. I mean, that is perfectly smooth. Yeah, this thing's dinged up a little bit. It's got some, uh, some scars of battle, but it's still serviceable. This hole going off back here is actually this much wider hole on the bottom side. And this whole area, this little ridge, this has to fit over this thing right here to get this down flat enough on this top pulley to sit flush, as flush as possible, so that this um, spindle nut can go down and secure it. So what were the culprits that were causing my issues? There were two main ones. Well, the first one was Infusion 360 in the post processor. When I told the system that I wanted to enter from this side of Y, for some reason, it was, and that had to do with the Z offset being off. It was coming down and was trying to enter in from this side. So it dinged this up a little bit back here by crashing um, because it was just trying to enter in to do the cut. So that was the first part. Uh, once I took that off, it did do a straighter approach uh, to cut the part. So that still kind of hid the insidious Z0 issue. In describing what happened, with my Z0, I'm gonna use a, an analogy of flying, and that's whenever there's an accident, or a lot of times when, when a pilot lands, wheels up, what has happened is, is their normal routine as far as approaching an airport and landing has been somehow disrupted, whether air traffic control adds in some instructions, has them do something else, and so it disrupts the routine, it disrupts their flow, and they may say, put the gear back up, and then, because of their their position and everything, then they forget to put the gear back down. Or the other part of that, which I got caught up in, is the reliance on technology. So again, in the flying world, if you're constantly relying on your autopilot, let's say, and the autopilot is not set up properly, people may fly into the side of a mountain because they just didn't set up their technology right, or they're reliant on their technology too much. That being said, when I was setting up all these different parameters and especially the, the probe app, one of the options in the probe app is use the probe as the Z reference tool for your Z height. Well, I did that even though I had made up a Z reference tool. Well, after doing some more reading and kind of pondering on it, I switched back from using the probe as my Z reference tool to using the 3 8 inch stainless steel stock bar that I had ground into a point as my Z reference tool. But when I changed that in the tool library, it does have it does have that provision, but it's got the touch probe set up here. But where I was reliant on technology, and I didn't show you this previously in the video, because I had loaded a CNC program, and in, at, during the beginning of the program, as you noted, it caught the, uh, the differing diameters between what was showing in Fusion 360 and what was showing in the Acorn Mill CNC 12 software. If I had opened up this screen, that tool, whether I think it was 12, this would have been yellow and and it would have had a red zero telling me immediately that there was some issue. Now the problem was when I switched back from the probe as my ZREF tool to the actual ZREF tool that I'd initially set up, I didn't measure the height offset of the probe. So, and it wasn't showing up or being highlighted in yellow here. So in my mind, again, Kind of going back to that analogy of flying and, and pilots relying on technology, there was no issue. And I just continued on because, of course, there's literally hundreds of different parameters and niggling little things that I'm looking at trying to get everything online. So when that happened, the height offset is 0.39352, about 3 eighths of an inch. So it was small enough that I really wasn't catching it. In essence, what happened... I use my little diagram here. Got to get my trusty pointer out. I, I've used the touch probe and I've come down and I've hit the part Z0 at the top of the part, but it's off by about three eighths of an inch. This is only about four tenths of an inch high in the in the main part in between the flanges that go around the complete edges of top and bottom. So we're talking about less than half of an inch total on this part. 
I'm thinking the top is Z0 when, as you can see, this red line is actually Z0. And so that's why the tools are plunging down and just crashing into the top very ungracefully because I had them set up to helix in on the cuts. And you could see that when I'm dialing in the fog buster, you could actually see the helix move. One of my uh, head scratching moments was why did it just cut a big hole, which uh, the original setup or the original design was to have an interior hole that was just under an inch. And then this little offset indented um, edge where the the top spindle nut could then seat into so i had clearance for the diameter of the spindle the round spindle nut and then it also had a little bit of depth but when i and i knew it wasn't just a machine fault because when i measured this big hole that went all the way through uh like these yellow lines dashed lines depict it wasn't just an arbitrary number that i was getting i was actually getting the diameter it nailed it i got the di diameter of the widest part of this top little offset this little uh edge here so i knew something was amiss strange things were afoot at the circle k once i found this height offset and the way i did that was i actually went old school not relying on technology and i did the uh the paper method of you know, bringing the end mill down and touching off on the top of the tool so here i am looking at what i see as z0 and i'm looking over at the screen and i'm seeing it about four tenths of an inch off and i'm okay what's going on and as i suspected it's simply because i had not actually used the probe and gotten the Z reference height of taking the probe and touching it off on the uh, touch plate. So once I did that, it solved the woes uh, specifically. There was a couple other minor little details in uh, Fusion 360 cam post-processing that I had to clean up, but those weren't the main issues. That's it. I'm going to do more machining. I'm not going to put it in this video. I'm already running long. So thanks for watching. Cheers.